local broadcast on. We got to look at our deck. It's all sealed, so that means we get six packs worth of cards. So already one of our two of our rare slots are kind of used up. I can see we've got a Howling Plains Bluegrass and then a Exiled Bard. I like to look at the rare cards first. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and look at see which rares we pulled on this rares and legendaries. So we picked up not a great pool. Uh, we got a Scroll of Yakazan. Uh, Demon of Dusk isn't going to do a lot for us. Maybe Disciple of Yazakan might do some something for us, but troops with cost three or less in all zones are quick. Yeah, it's really, we we got a pretty bad pool here. We did get Howling Bl Plains Bluegrass, which could help us out if we end up going with a lot of Kyotles. We may end up playing like some sort of Sapphire Wild Kyotle deck. So that's not looking that great to start out with, but let's look at to see what uncommons in, uh, we've got in our pool. So in the uncommon range, uh, Pyre Soul Summoner is a really good one to have. He's going to give us a lot of uh, late game. Uh, we've also got an Ashwood Blade, Blade Master. It's another good one to have. Sandstone Rumbler. So it looks like Diamond Ruby is definitely a, a possibility for us. We've got Chimera Guard. Uh, we've got a Rock Cast. That's okay for removal and blood. Storm Drummer's okay. Summoner, yeah. Our Wild's not looking super stupendous to me. I, I think we're, we're going to end up going ruby diamond aggro uh, we do get a cyclone shaman but we don't have a lot to, to match up with that and then let's look at our commons so basically what i'm doing right now is i'm deciding which shards we're gonna are the strongest for us by looking at each rarity one at a time is the way i like to do it sometimes i'll also like for commons we'll actually look at our pools one at a time so we'll go ahead and turn off all the pools here and joshua's over here to hang out i guess uh root forge regalia is not a bad one to have in your deck you got a Mickey? Okay. Uh, Abominate's not bad for this Spirits deck. Hatchery Priest is pretty good for the uh, for the uh, Spiders. I don't think we're going to play Boy. Spiders. You got two Vampire Boy Kiss. Three. What are you doing for me? The, the time is 1-3. It's 1 o'clock. Yeah, that's right. And the, the tournament just started, Elliot. Okay. Uh, Deep Gaze Disciple is not bad. Uh, Slicer's not bad for us as far as our... Um, Diamond Ruby as goes. Of course, Spirit Eagle's amazing. Prize Fall is not bad. Metal is okay if we had the right stuff to put it on. Um, yeah. Ether Lies is it's, it's all right. That's you know some stuff that's just mostly just all right there. Ruby, we got the Staggering Blast is kind of a big deal. Fury Seeker's not a bad one at the top end. Folly of Arrows isn't bad. Bomb Smith's not bad. Ember Duelist isn't bad, and then. Fiery ignition isn't bad, so it's it's not looking too crazy bad. But oops, uh, it sounds like we're trying to get kids out of the room here. Just have to shut off my microphone for that. Yell at the kids. Sapphire looks pretty good for us too. I mean, it's not bad. We got the. Turn 2, Runeweb Infiltrator, Windborn Acolyte's not bad. I like this guy, but he probably doesn't do enough in, in uh, this format. So I like the Thunderfield Seer, but it probably doesn't do enough in this format. It's still looking like I'm thinking Ruby, Ruby uh, Sapphire here, and now, or Ruby Diamond, rather. And now in the common, yeah, we've got one Wrathwood Larch, which is, is a big deal. Uh, one Stirring Oration's not bad. I mean, we could try going Sapphire Wild, maybe, but, I mean, Sapphire Wild's not bad for us. I don't know that it's the best. Let's go ahead and look at the rest of the pool when we're looking at these. So if we have Wild... Yeah, I don't know. I'm still not really feeling Wild. I think I'm feeling the, the Ruby Diamond, I think, is our strongest stuff that we could do we could throw down on the table so it looks like ruby diamond is going to be the the thing to do here yep i'm feeling it pyre soul summoner is really good and he's just one that he's really early and if you don't answer him he can he can definitely take over a game fairly uh i mean not quickly it takes time for it to happen but you know he's definitely a, a card that you your opponent wants to answer quickly we want to play the one where he draws us a card, probably. 
where are you? Oh, Benvolio. I think we're going to end up playing Benvolio here. Draws those extra cards to put more pressure on our opponent. Fiery Indignation is not bad. Ryan's Fall. I'm not sure that I'm going to play Metal because I don't have the Spirit to throw it on. It's not quick action speed, you know. Two of those. Fury Seeker, Sandstone Rumbler with Evasion. We'll give him. Can't be blocked except for troops that match match it. Uh, Pyro Soul Summoner, of course. Uh, War Dancer. So we're kind of mid rangey. I mean, if we get mid rangey enough, we could play with playing with fire. We'll play both the Staggering Blast here because that can definitely push through a win for us. Guy, okay, that guy, this guy, and that guy. Um, this guy could be cute. I mean, let's see. So we can do things at quick action speed when we top deck them, which means we can play them, um, you know, in response to our opponent's stuff. So that could get us. We could get value out of that. We also have an Eye of Lixel. Eye of Lixel wouldn't be a bad one to throw uh, metal on. Shard Ward, Shard Call. Probably want at least one shard ward in here. 18 cards right now. Volley of arrows isn't bad. Scrap tooth cackler isn't bad either. Definitely not playing the bar the um, exiled bard. Yeah, it's just not a great pool. <laughs> it's kind of a sad pool for us. Probably etherlize. Probably main deck. I think I already main deck pride's fall. Yeah, I did. Um. Might just want to play the second shard call. And like a uh, first blood. Don't want to play those. Not shard call, but shard ward. Prevent damage. This guy. A lot of times I throw life drain on him. Yeah, it's a 2-4 with life drain. That's could be uh, pretty relevant. We could also just make him evasive like our sandstone rumbler, but I think the life drain is pretty good on him. I could play one metal, maybe. I mean, metal plus Eye of Lixel could be good. And then I could play Shard Call with Eye of Lixel and make it more impervious to things, but that, that doesn't seem that great. Let's look at what our curve is doing here. Yeah, it's not the greatest. Yeah. Um, we do have kind of a high curve. I mean, I guess, I guess I could do Plane with Fire and then play Shard Call. Just play like a slower deck and then play the Eye of Lixel. Just try to go big. Go big or go home. Maybe one metal. I really, would I rather have metal? I think I would rather actually have Root Forge Regalia over metal, though. I think I would rather have that, actually. So, and then maybe the Ambusher. Maybe I should be playing the Ambusher. Troops I have in all zones are quick if they're three or less. I could do this. I don't know if the quick action troops are really going to happen. How many things actually work with playing with fire in here, too? That's that's the other thing I should be looking at. Uh, let's go ahead and over here. So I need five drops or above. I only have three things. I mean, it's probably not going to happen. We can probably get rid of that safely. And then trade it out for Ambusher. 
and that will probably be more relevant. It's at least a body. So I have Star Shield. I should probably be playing that. Shard Ward and Star Shield. Probably Shard Ward is, is the better one. Or sh yeah, Shard Ward. Two Shard Ward. Yeah, preventing the damage. Hmm. anything else I want to do with this deck right now or swap around. I especially like playing the shard call. But I like to I do I do enjoy the way that it deals it helps with uh Lixel. Helps out with that. And it can help fix us, which is useful. Maybe I'll get rid of one shard ward. Transform target cost in our troop in a phantom. At basic action speed. Yeah, they'll just get rid of one shard ward. Just because it has a prerequisite of us having to have something in play for it to actually do stuff. So it's it's it's, it's an amazing trick to have, but it, it like if we don't draw troops then it doesn't do anything. So that's my reasoning there. Okay, so now we just need to get the resources set for it. So let's check our ratios. So our ratios here are saying on resources, 48 ruby and 52% diamond. So we want to be close because I need double ruby, but I do. But with diamond, I can get to ruby. So probably a nine eight split should be fine for this one. And we didn't even and we didn't get to use our howling plains bluegrass. That's kind of sad. I wonder if I could have used it. Let's go ahead and pick our select our sleeve though while we're thinking about that. Let's see what could I pick. Um, what could I pick? Well, it's Easter, so let's do this cloud one. It's Easter weekend, maybe. It's kind of Eastery. Kind of makes me feel Eastery. Kind of looks like an egg, you know, like the the classic egg kind of a thing. We'll go ahead and save the deck, and let's look at while we're sitting here. I'm gonna look at if I wanted to go wild sapphire diamond and go with coyotals. Let's see how much coyotal I had in here. I wanted to play that shard. Yeah, not really a lot, and not a great a lot of great ones. Like if I was gonna play this, I would need to have the one where it gives it buffs your guys plus two plus two, and I'd want to have the diamond one where it gives you plus one plus one, and then there's a sapphire one that gives you plus two plus two and flying, and then it passes it on. Like all those things would be things that might push me more into this type of a, a build, but those I just don't have the right stuff to do it. The Storm Drummer's okay, but a lot of times he hits something that's just too small to really be relevant. Alright, here we go. Round one of this VIP tournament sealed deck. Here we are on Easter weekend. It's March 26th. And it looks like Ether or Ether is playing Spirits. I am playing, and I will play first, of course. And give uh, Ether Ether a GLHF. It looks like I'm starting. I'm off to a rousing start here with a, a mulligan, an obvious mulligan. <laughs> uh, can't really play any of these cards. Uh, we'll keep this one though. It's a very slow hand, but it's you know in in uh, in limited formats. You know, having a slow hand is is not the end of the world. A lot of times we do have removal. 
some early removal for something we may have to deal with for ether, 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 ether. Looks like there's a spirit bound spy. So the question is, do I hit it with the fire indignation now or do I wait? I mean, no, oh, there we go. Shard call. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have to shard call for anything crazy. So we'll just shard call for blood or for ru ruby rather here. We'll just get our ruby set up. And we'll be set up for next turn fairly well. And we do have a Spirit Eagle, which will be able to come down soon. And follow that up with an Emberleaf War Dancer. Now, Crush, I found, to, is one of the best things to have in this matchup. Just because you need to be able to crush over those tiny little bodies that the Spirits player is putting up. Or make them throw a lot of Spirits at your stuff. That sort of thing. Okay, so next turn... Uh, he can buff his spirit, so maybe I should indignate indignation it now. I mean, it's just a spirit, and then he gets more spirits. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and indignation this guy now, just because it's basic action speed. Indignation is, and uh, this way, when he throws his spirit on there, that's one less spirit I have to deal with. So, and he didn't buff it or anything, so that's that's not too bad for me. Although that's one less removal spell that I have for something that may have been better to use it on. So this guy is Phantom. You can get another Phantom back when I kill this one. But at least he's not getting two Phantoms for for the one piece of removal. He just gets the one. Oh, but he can throw some Life Drain on it if he wanted to. Shift some of that Life Drain around. Alright, so we will go ahead and throw this up. Now, we don't need to use our Champion Ability because we do have a play here. So basically, if I have plays, I'm not going to use my Champion Ability. It's usually how I do this. Gemstone Feeder is going to help him push, get some life back, though. That's not the best for me. Emberleaf War Dancer. We actually have enough stuff to fully pump up our Emberleaf War Dancer, which is kind of exciting. It's debatable whether we should try to block this guy in case he has a trick, though. But most of the blood tricks are... Well, I guess in this format, the blood trick is... Oh, he's going to abominate. Okay, well, that's definitely bad for me. Gets his spirit back. He may have... Well, I guess not, really. So, yep. Taking five. He gains five. It's looking pretty good for Ether there. He's got the got the combo off. He's got his guy... I mean, I'm playing Ruby, so... There's not a lot of... Like, hopefully I can get Aether Lies or something. Um, <laughs> that's really what needs to happen here. Uh, I mean, I, at this point, I might just want to try to control the board state more than anything else. And just take less damage. So I don't even think I have a good swing in here. We'll just be the control player here. And I'll play an Emberleaf War Dancer. And then next turn, we will play a shard and use our champion ability to see what we can drum up. Maybe I can get that Aether Lies and turn off this Gemstone Feeder. I'm just basically trying to stop this Phantom up here. I don't want to double block this guy. I'd rather pump this guy up and then single block here. In case he has a trick, I'll just make the trade. Oh, he's got... Yeah, so it would have been nice to have had, you know, that. It would have been nice, a nice one to have had. So it looks like he's got... Oh, he's got... Oh, he's going to give my guys minus power equal to its... So he's going to kill my Spirit Eagle and debuff my Emberleaf War Dancer. It's looking like a really bad round one for us right off the bat here. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty bad. Um, yep, taking five more from that gemstone feeder. We really need to see our ether lies. Uh, 30 cards in our deck, so 1 in 30 chance we can pull the, the right card to answer this. Ambush guide's probably not going to be what we need to, to get there. So I'm going to go ahead and play a shard, and I'll go ahead and draw a card here. And we're going to see what we pick up. We get shard ward. Is not really going to do it either. Is it at the end of the turn? At the end of the turn, I have to discard it. So I'm going to end up discarding the Shard War. That's kind of unfortunate. Um, yeah, so we'll just play our Ambush Guide in response to his attack next turn. And, uh, yeah, Shard Ward, unfortunately. Well, I might just do that now. Yeah, I can do Shard Ward now. And it at the end of my turn, if this is in your hand, discard this. Okay. Well, maybe I'll just yell yeah, Shard Ward now for Blood, I guess. Shard Ward Blood. 
And I don't know if that's going to last until his next turn, though. I don't think it will. I think it just lasts. Maybe it, maybe it lasts until the, they actually have to prevent it. I can play this guy quick action speed, so we're okay there. So let me actually just throw a Spirit Eagle on the other guy. We'll see what happens here. Maybe if I throw Spirit Eagle here. You see, it doesn't even tell me that they're shard warded, so that's that's kind of an issue. Um, we'll play this safe. We'll just do it like this and double block these guys and get them out off the table. So we'll block here, take five more. He's got so much life now. It's stupid how much life he has. You can kill my Spirit Eagle. I guess maybe I should have shard warded for, for diamond or whatever. Oh, Mesa Lookout. Well, that's mean. That's rude. That's pretty rude right there. Doesn't really matter which. He probably just wants to. Yeah. Oh, he's going to save this guy? Okay. I guess it doesn't really matter. He's still net 1 2 2 here, so. And now he can attack in the sky. Yeah, I'm in really bad shape here. Yep. Some of the power of rare cards right there is getting shown off. That's. Yep. It'd be nice if this reverts my guy, but I don't think it does. I think it just makes him plus 2 plus 2. Yeah, that's really not going to be good enough. Okay, well, I'm going to have to... So I'll chump block here, take one in the sky, throw this guy at one of these two twos. Yeah, he just full swings here. I think he might still win, because I'm taking... Oh, he's going to move it over there. All right, so the life drain's over there now. That seems kind of silly. Okay. So I do this and that and take five and go to one. Yep, looking pretty bad for us. And that's, yeah, that's going to be game. So let's go ahead and go to game two here. Hope that we get something better than what we had. Uh, it was pretty rough. Our pool is pretty pretty uh, substandard, though, honestly. Uh, we could try to go faster, maybe. Maybe play some metal. He didn't seem to have a ton of removal in his deck. Maybe metal would be better. Let's see. Uh, Ether Lies was a big one we could have used there, though. Yeah, Star Shield. Yeah, let's move that. Oops, not Star Shield. What? What do I want? I feel like I want to be faster. Staggering Blast doesn't do a lot here. We can probably trade one of those for metal. Or Creepy Conspirators. Oh, that's that would have been big in this matchup, actually. Creepy Conspirators. That would have been a big one. I feel like I want to play metal. Yeah. Maybe trade metal for root forge regalia? I'll trade that. There we go. Uh, I guess we'll just, we'll just go with that then. Yeah. See what happens. Really nice curve out for him, too, on that last one. We'll play first. And we mulled the six. That didn't help either. And we may be mulling again here. Uh, we'll keep this. We have a turn two play, so hopefully we'll draw the third and fourth shard that we need eventually. We need to get a, another diamond shard is really what we need here, so hopefully we'll draw that diamond shard. We need that diamond shard pretty badly here. Bright Moon Brave, that's nice. Cards that I wish I had. Oh, Pride's Fall, that would have helped last game too. That's another one that would have been really nice to have seen.
take one, because that's a bad block for me, obviously. And maybe I could swing back for two here. He didn't seem to have a lot of uh, removal, that's that's for sure. So maybe Pride's Fall will take care of this guy. They have to have four toughness, so that's kind of a big deal. Ooh, there's a Pyre Soul Summoner, so that's pretty good. I'm going to swing across, because that seems like a bad block to me when this guy has Swift Strike. Especially with zero resources. There we go. And we'll take two on the following turn, unless he has something to buff his Deep Gaze with. We do need to draw a shard here. We're stuck on shards. This is... The last hand I had was one you'd always keep. Yeah, it with the with the uh, Emberleaf Duelist. Pride's Fall also helps here a lot, so drawing into that's kind of a big deal. I'm not going to make this block obviously, and I'm going to start. Well, if I get four resources, I can start doing this, this ability. Uh, pumps his guy up, and we can Pride's Fall him next turn, so we'll do that. Or I might try to see if I can get a little bit more value. We'll see. Take five. Taking five from this Deep Gaze Alkalite. Swinging through with Pyrosol Summoner and the Duelist, because I can just Pride's Fall. Yeah, so we'll just go ahead and swing through here. We do need to draw some resources. We do need that. So we'll wait until his attack phase. Maybe he'll try to pump up his guy again, like throw a guy out and then move, move an ability over or something. But I don't feel like we're in a, a bad position, honestly. <laughs> Not drawing resources is pretty bad for us, but on the other hand, our opponent is, I don't know. Okay, so hopefully he's going to move it over. Move it over. Do it. Yes! See, that's what waiting gets you. Waiting gets you value. Stuff like that. See, that's super valuable for us. Now we really need a resource still, though, next turn. Really big deal for us to, uh, to get that resource right now. So, taking one. Uh, we don't really have an attack now because this guy's too big for us, unless I can draw metal or something. Oh, there's that diamond resource we were talking about, us needing. Um, yeah, so we could Chimera Guard Fallen or Shrieker. We don't have an attack here, so we're just going to play something during our first main phase. Um, probably Chimera Guards, because then I can throw the ability on the Emberleaf Duelist, and that seems pretty good. This is going to give him attack equal to its defense. Uh, it seems okay. It's going to pump him one. Mm, maybe if I could pump his defense. Maybe I throw it on the Shrieker instead. Yeah, I think we'll play the Shrieker because that seems like a better card overall. Has that life drain on it. Blocks his guy. Sure. Yeah, he's lucky that guy is so so big and beefy. I can't deal with that right now. So probably, yeah, the Crypt Shrieker. Creepy Conspirators is definitely going to do some work in this one, I think. That uh, Necrotic Allegiance reverting target troops. I probably should have main decked it, honestly. I should have known better. Because reverting troops is just a very powerful effect to have in your deck. The ability to do that. And we have plenty of necrotics. So like right now, uh, let's see, this guy's necrotic. So we would have got it. Oh, look, he drew his, his, his Azun's Pride again. And he's going to kill, or he's going to debuff my Duelist and my Crypt Shrieker and make them worthless. That's nice. That's... That's real nice. Yep, of course. Yep, that's that's real nice. Oh well. At least I can Pyre Soul Summoner if I draw another resource, which I do. So uh, we can Boomsmith his spirit. Did he throw anything on it? He didn't. Boomsmith his spirit and start getting control of the board back. Kind of stalemate the board a little. Yeah, let's boomsmith that spirit. Yeah, let's go ahead and take care of that. I don't even know if he... I think I I nullified his... I don't even know where he's put his spirit thing. Has he even put it on anything? I haven't seen him put it on anything yet. Maybe he put it on the... Uh, this guy? No, I don't know where he put it. Yeah, if I do the, the Shrieker, yeah, I'll, I'll do the Shift onto the Shrieker next turn. I just wanted to get that Spirit off the table before he puts something on it. Swift Strike, uh, that's not so great. Um, I might just, we'll probably go Kamir Gar Fallen into the Spirit Eagle, honestly. 
Yeah, this, yeah, this isn't the board state I want to swing a shrieker into. Um, let's see. Yeah, we'll throw up that spirit eagle here. And then I'll come here, guard following it, and start swinging across next turn and get that damage in there. And just keep passing the turn back and forth. So, definitely much better than last game. Yeah. Oh, he has a vampire princess too? <laughs> Are you serious? Right now, he's got all the rares, this guy. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's nice. That's that's real nice. Um, I guess I'll throw the swift strike on my spirit eagle. And then guard fallen. Jeez. That is... <laughs> Wow. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and go slice her and throw the swift strike on our eagle. Wow. Doesn't get much better than that. Luckily, I can I have answers for it, but... Oh, wow. Vampire princess. That's... It's nice. Yeah, the removal hasn't seemed to have been that great for him, though. That's that's the only thing I'm really seeing. He's kind of building up our boards right now. I can swing for five, but it's net three because he does two and gains two. So if he's dealing two and I'm dealing three, is that enough? If I throw the guard fallen ability on my spirit eagle, I mean it might be. I don't have anything for the Vampire Princess to turn into a Vampire Kiss, so we might be okay there. I think we can start pushing now, yeah. Let's go Let's go for it. Yeah, let's go ahead and shift that ability over there. And swing it across. Uh, opposing Troop. I guess I'll get rid of the Rotting Knight. I'm not going to... Not going to be swinging on the ground anytime soon. So he'll gain two, go to ten. So I've got him in like three turns, I want to say. Four turns. He goes to ten, then I take him five. Then he goes to seven, I take him five. He's at two, so like three turns. Right now is what the clock is at. Plus, I can Pyrosol Summoner to start throwing stuff in the sky. I'm going to hold on to Conspirators to debuff. He threw his... Where did he throw it? I can't tell where he put his Phantom. He put it on... He put it on his Murthikin. Okay. Is he going to full swing here? He's going to swing like that. Okay, so... He's got cards in hand. Um, so I'll block here. And... We'll chump block here. And then take two, right? I mean, that's pretty much it right there. He has life drain too. How much life drain does he have? Five? He life drained it all back. He has life drain. Oh, he has life drain on his ride, rotting knight. Oh, well, that's. Well, now I guess I'm back in defense mode. Hmm. I think I want Conspirators that life drain off of his guy. Or oh, wait, I can't, because that's... No, he has Swift Strike. What's the gem giving him? One of the things is giving him... I think he moved the life drain over from his feeder. I don't want him to have life drain on that guy. Yeah, let's go ahead and Conspirators that off of him. It'd be crazy if Revert actually got rid of gems, too. 
Or like if you could knock out gems. Imagine if you could knock out gems. That'd be crazy. Um, I've got shard ward which I can't use. I think we stay on the plan. We just keep swinging, right? only gain two now, so we're in a better spot. He does have this guy with Swift Strike. That's kind of... I have to block him with a lot of stuff to deal with him. Oh, I forgot. Oh, he has the Vampire Kiss now. Shh. Ah, oh, crap. Completely forgot about that. Great. Now he kills my Spirit Eagle. I just gave him the game. Great. And he got my Pyrosol Summoner. Man, that's really bad. That was super bad for me. All right, well, let's see what we draw. A shard. Well, that's no good. Well, at least it's going to be a slow death for a little while here. That's super unfortunate. He can pretty much like swing with the house here, and it's it's not great for me. Ugh, that was such a huge misplay for me. I should have just sat on the board and not swung there. I'd be perfectly fine if I was. And he has a demon of dusk. Sure, I have one of those too. But man, that's wow. Let's see what we draw here. No, a shard. Okay. So we'll be etherizing the Demon of Dusk. Now, is it during at the start of my turn? So I have a Celestial of Dawn in my deck because of that guy. Oh, this is basic action speed? Ugh. Gotta read the cards. I needed to hit him there. I'm basically dead now. He's gonna probably Vampire Princess will hit my Ether Lies. Fifty chance, fifty fifty. Okay, well that was lucky. I'm basically still dead though. Yeah, ambush guy doesn't do enough here. Yeah, it's over. Well, that's unfortunate for our first round. I mean, I guess I could top deck an Angel. No, I can't because it'll kill it before then. I really needed to get some more stuff in the air, or just sit defensive a lot longer with that Vampire Princess in play. The power of Vampire Princess, that's for sure. Oh well. Round one, we'll get paired down to someone that has like less bomb rares, hopefully. My goodness. The bomb rares for for Aether this, this game. I mean, there was definitely misplays there. I, I, I won't say that there wasn't, but uh, yes. Yeah, start.